Birds. It's all about birds in this show. We're going to photograph birds being born. In my opinion, it's an amazing sight. Adorama TV presents Visual Impressions with Joe DiMaggio, where you will learn to create compelling and imaginative photography. Here's your host, Joe DiMaggio. Hi, so this is Joe DiMaggio for Adorama TV, and we're going to talk a little bit about nature photography. Now, it's a pretty well-known fact that uh, nature photography is something that I thoroughly enjoy and respect, but not something that I do every day. There are photographers who do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's not really what I do, but I certainly do respect it, and I do absolutely love the outcome. What we have is we have a robin who uh, built a nest in, um, in my porch. So what we're going to do is we're going to photograph that with stills and with video. And we're going to use a whole bunch of different options. But the first thing you have to do, you have to understand is, you need to make a list of what you think you're going to need. So let's go over the list real quick. You're going to need a camera, whatever that means, whatever camera you're going to use. You're going to need a camera. You're going to need one or two different lenses. What we did is we started with the 300-28 and the 400-28. And then I said to myself, wow, you know, that's kind of strange. Most people don't have that. You have the availability to rent it, but most people don't have them. It's usually the pros that have them. So I took a lens that would more like something that you would use, which is a 400-5.6 or a 300-F4. And what I've done is I've actually put close-up tubes on it so it'll allow me to get much closer to the birds and the chicks as they're coming of age and getting ready to leave the nest. What I decided to use to photograph the, the mama bird and the papa bird and also the, the chicks is this 400 millimeter 5.6 Canon lens and I'm using two of these uh, close-up tubes which will allow me to cut down the air surface between what I'm photographing, the film plane, and the birds. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's easy, it's fast, and it allows me to do everything I want to do. Obviously, I'm shooting at 5.6. I want it wide open, uh, but that'll give me enough depth of field and depth of focus to actually get the birds and all of the, um, the babies tack sharp. So we've got the lens, we've got close-up tubes. What about lighting? What are we going to use for lighting? So I thought about it, I made a list, and I said, well, you know what we could use? We could use hot lights. Hot lights are fine, and I said, well, I, let's try something else. So I said, well, you know what we could use? We could use um, the electronic flash modeling light and use that to light it because it's in very, very deep, deep shade, super deep shade, and there's very little light to be seen there. Uh, and I said, okay, that's an option. And then I said to myself, well, I want to leave the setup set up. I want to leave the, the, the everything set up except the camera. Leave the camera set up probably all day, but probably take it down in the evening or bag it. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll bag the equipment and we know it's secure. So nothing moves, everything stays rock steady, and we have a flow and continuity. So I thought about it and I said, you know what options we could do? We could take some uh, something like this which is, uh, I believe this is made by, I don't know, oh, Sears, and hook it up into the, um, into the wood and use that. And then, this is something that we use back in the day. It's a vice grip that has quarter 20 on it. So what you do is you hook this on here like so, and you now have a quarter 20 platform where you could put a ball head, you could put a camera, you could put a GoPro, you could put anything you want on it. What I would thought I would do is I would actually hook up, this is something that I make, just this little tube, which is kind of cool, Manfrotto 492, whatever that's called, and then an LED light. This one happens to be made by Sartec, but there are a zillion you can use. Manfrotto has them. A whole bunch of different com uh, companies have them. And then mostly balanced to 5200K 
or daylight. And the nice part about this is it's cool, not hot. And guess what? It doesn't use electricity. So we're outside. If it rains with the hot light, with an airy light or something like that, you know what? It could get pretty ugly. So it's not something that we want to do. The same thing with an electronic flash modeling light. You're going to have to leave the power pack out or leave the strobe out. You're going to have to run a wire, and then you, it's going to tend to be a little hot. The LED lights, I kind of believe, are going to be the future of photography. Ten years from today, that's what we're going to be using LEDs. So I ran, ran the numbers in my head and figured out what I could do. I set this up, and guess what? It didn't work. Do you know why it didn't work? Not thinking. It disturbed the mother and the father birds coming in with the food. The one thing we do not want to do, we do not want to disturb nature. We don't want to cut live plants. We don't want to touch anything with our human um, smells that will force an animal to not come back to a baby. That's something you should know. So when I put this contraption, this contraption that I put together up there, it scared the mother. I got very concerned. I took it down instantly, moved to the studio, and watched from a long distance to see if the mother came back. About an hour later, the mother came back. So even though this was a good idea on paper, from an execution standpoint, it's going to be not good. So what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to shoot it with electronic flash, which is something that is a standby. We'll use an on-camera electronic flash when we're doing stills, and when we're doing video, we'll increase the ISO. I've done some tests with the ISO and gone up to, you can't believe this, we've gone up to, I guess, 16,000 and 25,000. The images are absolutely excellent with available light. The other thing we've done is we've taken some aluminum material that will catch the late light, throw it up there to give it this little halo effect. It's not something that will affect, it's a long distance away, it's 10 feet away, it won't bother anything, it won't add undue heat to the birds, it won't give them any discomfort, it'll be fine. So, the best laid plans of a photographer, you need to have the ability to change. You need to have the ability to change in midstream and admit that it's not working, change it. Change it immediately. Pre-production is absolutely a key with this type of photography. Again, you're in it for the long haul. It could be a week, it could be two weeks, it could be three weeks. Another tip, if you're gonna use a tripod and you can't leave it there, put a black circle with a magic marker on the ground and the directions so you know the direction of the, the, the lens so you will know exactly how to get back so you have uh, consistency across all of the photographs. In the interest of adding a little bit more elevation to this particular head, I took this uh, Manfrotto ball head, put it on top here, and then what I'm able to do is actually raise it up and the reason we do that is so the, the lens and the camera become what we call plano parallel or level to the birds in the nest and that's what we want to do. We want it to be as level as possible. We're still going to have to tilt up just a little bit but the end result hopefully is going to be a, a great great photograph. There have been times that we have to use our ingenuity in making a photograph and we piece things together and we use bubble gum, we use duct tape, we use anything that will rubber bands, anything that'll make something work. You have to understand that um, there are already products that are made specifically for these applications and uh, you can use those also. For instance, this is something that we've been using for a long time and this is the super clamp um, made by um, Bogan, ha, ah, it's Manfrotto, I remember when they were Bogan, and then the, um, the super arm or the magic arm. So this is another way to hook up our lights and the GoPro, whatever it happens to be. So this is a great, great way of, of getting from A to B a whole lot easier than piecing other pieces together. So it's another option. 
and uh, they're really kind of cool. And they come in so many different flavors. They've got big ones and small ones, and uh, you can put them on your DSLR, little tiny ones. They're kind of cool. So this is an option, a super clamp and a magic arm. Joe DiMaggio for Adorama TV. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.